Hey, what's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing this evening? Thanks for joining us tonight on Cat Eyes. Um, tonight, we're going to do another follow-up on the research um, team FPV has together. Um, so you guys know who they are. Uh, we got Jimbo, FPV, One Conscience, Cat Eyes, and myself. I hope everyone's having a good week. I know it's been a pretty bizarre week with the hoax shootings and Starman and everything. But um, apart from that, we're going to get right to the business here with some good information. Um, so I don't know who's first on deck today. I think James might be up. But um, what up, guys? How's it going? Hey, Troll. Oh. Hi, Cats. Hi, all. And I'm probably the last one you want to start with because I don't know where to start because... You know, most of what I do is contingent on, you know, FPV and one because I, 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 without the stuff mapped like, like it's being done by FPV, I, I, I wouldn't be able to think farther on what's going on. And, you know, without, you know, the earthquake stuff, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of at a, a kind of standstill. So, again, anything I do is sort of like, Secondary and depends on, on, on the stuff that they're making. Right. No, I understand. You know, yeah. a reality. Yeah. So it's better just to start with um, both of them before. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. All right. Having said that, FPV. Um, yeah. So show us your recent discoveries, any updates you got going. If you want to do a recap, you want to get people up to speed, you want to show your video. <laughs> Any of the above, um, I will just give you the floor, and um, I'll put my mic on mute. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us again. Um, everybody in chat, thanks again, all right? Hold up. Go ahead, Right, Sorry. thanks. Uh, thanks, Roster. <laughs> Hello, Cats. Hello, panel members. Hello, people in chat. Yeah, this is just a recap, guys. Um, we were on Jamie's a couple of days ago, and we noticed some people still aren't getting what we're putting across. You know, they, they think we're following the 4D kind of thinking, but we don't. Uh, the map we're using is the one series took from Google and um, applied an algorithm to square the images back to square. And I'll just present to you the map so you can see what I'm talking about. Right, this, this is what uh, series, this one, this is what series took out of Google applied an algorithm to square the images back to square instead of rounding them off and this is what was produced now you can see it's you can see there the, the centerpiece is basically what the mercator map's been taken from although it's a bit skewed in the north this is corrected on series map you can also see in the north there is more in the north it's just obscured so you couldn't decode what's there but you can see it carries on and the same in the south antarctica hidden landmass and water and <laughs> some giant whatever those are at the bottom that's the map we're working on the, the main part of our work is on the center of this map and you know that we've been i've been decoding the Alaska lines and applying this to this world map and it, everything seems to fit perfectly with it uh, we're currently looking at the sun going across it the information i've been passing to jimbo helped him to Decode basically how the sun works and put itself across the sky. You may have seen uh, some in our previous videos where we've used halo, highlighted the use of halos in the sky as passing the sun from one to another. So, you know, our, our approach to this is a technological aspect. We live in a technological well world that's run by technology from the underworld. That's basically where we're coming from of video proofs and real world data that can confirm this kind of thing is going on not to mention what i'm discovering at nasca uh, this falls in the same category of very high tech technology so we thought we'd do a recap just to you know make sure you're aware we're not running in 4d we're, it, it's working in 3d the only thing looping in this sky is the well the luminaries all the luminaries are looping and they're all technologically controlled and what I'm looking at at NASCAR also shows things east and west. So we're looking at something a lot larger than what we see here. Uh, in the next research update, I'll, I'll be overlaying some of what I've, I've been finding at NASCAR on this world map and 
expand outside of it so you can see roughly where things are on the outside of this map um so that was that's the recap um we brought you know we we come on live tonight to do a questions and answers basically on this research in case people aren't understanding what we're talking about uh basically what we're, what's happening here with jim's breakdown we can use this what you're looking at here is nasca geoglyphs overlaid on the railroad map and various uh, technologies in the underworld that help with the running of the sun. So basically what's happening is the sun's coming in, it's doing a, a few movements like this, and then it's either reset or it's re-looped back and it comes around for another go. We're currently monitoring sunspots to see if there's any changes in sunspots from various recordings around the world, which a few people in chat there probably be helping with, like Sandra. So that's where we're coming from, guys. We've got six, what, what Enoch referenced as portals, but um, as Jim correctly would call gates, electro, electric gates, like electronic gates, which is putting the sun across the sky. Now, the halo's operation seems to be like a vertical and horizontal hold. It kind of traps this from moving fast, because without them, it would shoot across the sky like this. So it's magnet electromagnetically trapping the sun and manoeuvring it over the face of our world and looking at what the uh, the gates there seems to be six paths on the gates where it'll switch up and down over the course of a year to give you your northern summer and your southern summer uh we do have some switching noticed on the mimic map uh, especially the winter equinox where we noticed the double helix crossing the world on the mimic map which told us it was switching into like a winter mode it was changing the path with the sun again um we'll put it to I'll, I'll let the other members have a chat about it see if they they want to add anything to that then we'll go to questions and answers from you guys in the chat if you like we'll see you um well i can add to that what i can add to it is um, the earthquake tracking data that goes right along with the magnetic data. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What we realized is that the earthquakes are um, carrying the energy that's uh, carrying the sun along the plates. Um, we've been tracking it for a few months now, and we're seeing the trend. And the earthquake pressure is kind of making the path that the sun is traveling. So the earthquakes are just north and south of where the sun is actually traveling across the plain. So, and that's what I mean by saying that it's kind of forming the path. Um, also, what we realized, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Uh, pretty much it all runs together. I mean, when you look at the earth chakras and the earth, the earthquake pressure lines, the volcanoes and, and their eruptions, and I've been tracking these earthquakes for about 11 weeks, um, they all run along the same, the same fault lines, the same paths, and it's pretty much the plates. It's these gigantic plates that um, he's talking about and, and Jimbo has found and, and they're tracing out. Um, these plates are what carries um, all the different things that happen in our world. Yeah, I see Tommy in chat said there's an earthquake in Mexico. It was a 7.2. So adding to what I was also saying, um, I can guarantee you by tomorrow uh, around my area, I bet you it's going to warm up because when the earthquake hits in Mexico, it actually pushes the warm airs up into the states. And I can, you know, look at it tomorrow, but today I can't tell for sure. So it, it, what I say is it's all running together. Um, I don't really have a lot else to add. We were just kind of recapping. And, you know, I started out doing the earthquakes, and it really started to all blend together. So all of it is really just one energy that I'm talking about. Oh, 
<laughs> Easy. <laughs> the beast is a walking and waking. <laughs> yeah, the map on screen, guys, that's uh, done by Ironic. He's um, collating and uh, modifying the data to run on this projection uh, with the grid overlay that we've brought from Laske, Peru. Um, where did that go? <laughs> it just hold on, it just vanished. There we go. <laughs> yeah, this map for you. Um, what we're looking at here is this is just one recording per day over the course of a week. Uh, Ron's been recording these for the past five five weeks or so now. So it's like a snapshot, you know, one once per day snapshot. Uh, one conscience is obviously doing it a lot more detailed than this, but it's just to show you this is technology below ground, switching on, switching off and helping with the functions of our, of our realm, basically, how how the sun and the moon and, and everything else is uh, interacting with this world. We put this down to technology, activating, deactivating, and if you look in the northwest of Alaska, that's a very busy area. <laughs> a lot goes on there, and the same in New, Ze New Zealand's area, which it's kind of off map there. But one, one's been recording it, and she knows it's quite active there as well. You know, and if you, on, looking at our map, a few thousand miles east of there would be the, one of these portal slash gate regions, which would be the eastern gates. Uh. Yeah, go on, man. Oh, I was going to apologize first for the dogs going crazy, but um, can I present? I had a few pictures I was going to present if I could. Yeah, get them ready and say when, and I'll present you. Okay. Well, they're they're ready. Yeah, put them on screen, and as soon as I see them, I can present you then. I just want to make don't want to make sure you don't put the uh, hangout screen yeah, up. <laughs> so put it on screen now, and then I'll present it once I know you've got the right image on. Um, Okay, do you see it? Yeah, hold on. Is that me now? Get back to the beginning. Okay. There you go. All yours. All right. So, I just wanted to show you guys some of the um, slides that I worked on. Uh, this is the, well, it was the vortexes and chakras. Let's see if I can't pause it. Sorry. Okay, so this one I wanted to show especially because this is going along with what FPV, whoops, I thought I paused it. <laughs> uh, it was going along with what he was saying. And so these lines, the actual grid, I'm thinking, is the plates. And if you see um, over here on the east, the land is right up against our angels. So that land, I'm thinking, doesn't go too much further. Uh, I could be wrong, but based on the way the energy flows as well, I, I kind of want to lean that way. Now, however, when you look over here to the west, we have a lot of miles that are just uh, empty, according to what we know in the world. And that's what he was saying um, when he was saying he was tracking other lines. I mean, look how much space we have over here. So there, there's probably plenty over here that we just have no idea. We can see the energies working from it and the different plates that are leading up to the world. And they hit in the spots where we always get earthquakes or volcanoes or, or different events. And then after that, I just had my... 11 weeks worth of, well, that's volcanoes first, sorry. That's currently uh, erupting. And the next is 11 weeks worth of earthquakes. And then uh, at the end, there's a couple with uh, the caves and obelisks and stuff. 
what I'm trying to show with it all is that all these things are just following the same paths from the volcanoes to the earthquakes to where these different crystal caves and things are located. Um, it's all just following the plates. I'm sure there's more activity than we know about, but they don't give us the data to really compare certain areas. But everything follows the same energy path. It follows the sun path and it just all follows the same thing. I have one image from magnetic data from the USGS or something to that effect from about 2015. But what it does is it really does show, um, well, okay, I'm sorry, you're not finished. Oh, it's okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna uh, turn it off now. It's too late, uh, the hangout got shown then. That, that's why I'll go quick just in case, okay, whoops. What, uh, who dropped? Uh, one did. <laughs> Carry on, Jim. Okay. Um, let me share one window. So do you want, well, it's, it's probably shared, but, um, uh, let me go to applications and this one and share. We should be good. Uh, I should have a map that says, uh, US, UK, whoops, uh, whatever. Um, but here again, it shows a center point north of Hudson's Bay. And a little west, it shows a northern magnetic anomaly over Russia in the east. Also, one that covers the two plates, uh, the, the range of the um, magnetic uh, displacement, and the second south pole. So, in a sense, there are four poles two northern north poles and two southern south poles. And through the middle, there's a perfect line where the sun is allowed to follow. This this isn't chaotic. It's it's the control to magnetize and steer the sun basically on a cone, you know, over well, this is just one snapshot, but basically as these lines collapse, the path that the sun will take will, you know, move up or down with it relative to the intensities on these poles. So, and they all switch, so they can switch from, again, summer to winter. It's just like a sinus dial wave turning around and coming the other way, sort of like, but anyway, this is just we'll have to do shows a part, too. the plates <laughs> and how important. And again, these on the front side of, um, of uh, South America, there's a plate that goes in towards the notch and then continues straight down through Chile and all that. And again, another one up north in Greenland that traverses the whole continent. Right now, the southern part of the eastern uh, plate in Greenland is active because we can see it in the weather and on, you know, even, well, it's, it's a hot spot. <laughs> Just one corner of that plate is active uh, during our winter here. <laughs>